Good day everyone, so do you know how the crystallize reaction works? Currently, everyone is running Navia and they're doing all sorts of nuke builds, but not a lot of people are giving proper attention to the reaction itself. So that's what this video is about. And we can just do a couple of experiments. So before we get into the full theory, you can see here, I'm just using Navia's Elemental Burst and Farina, and we are just trying to see what happens when we get these crystal shards. So immediately you've noticed that we can only have three crystal shards on the battlefield and there does seem to be a limit as to how many we can generate in any given instance of time. So these are just some casual observations that anyone can make but if we go into studying the formal theory as per KQM then basically this is how the crystallized reaction actually works. You apply Geo onto an enemy with a hydroelectro power or cryo aura and that generates an elemental shard. There is a limit to how much you can generate from any specific enemy and that limit is hard capped at one elemental shard per second regardless of how much geo or hydro or whatever you apply to that enemy. Secondly, the shards themselves always spawn in front of an enemy. So where the enemy faces can actually matter because that might be slightly outside of your pull radius of Navia. So that is something practical to consider. And then finally, the reaction itself is classified as a transformative reaction, which means that the shield's absorption scales with your character EM and level. So what does this mean? Well, in practice, basically, you would start off here with Navia, you go here onto Farina, and as you play through the rotation in this team, you'll notice that we're gonna have the maximum stacks available right here, look here with Navia, so we can instantly start hitting the enemy, start generating more uh, shrapnel, and then we can just hit harder before rinsing and repeating. So from a theoretical perspective, this is perhaps how you could play, and this might make a lot of sense, but if you've noticed very, very carefully here, despite the fact that we've optimized for the fact that Navia can generate like the maximum shrapnel precisely at the point when all of the maximum buffs are active, we kind of lost it, indeed lost the bigger picture with the team because Goro's elemental burst and a couple of the other cooldowns didn't sink in as properly. So here's the thing, even though we now know how Crystallize works, when it comes to using this in practice, things are obviously a bit different. So you can see here in the Spiral Abyss, I'm running the exact same rotation that I just did, but there's like a fawn bush in front of me. And despite the fact that I've got now the full stack here with Navia, I actually wasted time because these two wolves did not like group up at a time when I had my maximum amount of damage ready. So this is really what I want to discuss for the rest of the video. How do you make something like this more practical? Now, for those of you that have seen my previous video, you'll see that this is the rotation that I'm using. It is far more logical, it ensures better consistency and uptime of cooldowns. And you'll notice here that my Navia is going to get exactly three shrapnel stacks precisely when both wolves are like crowding or like they're launching into her. And you can see here, once again, we boom, we just hit both of them, clear the field, move on to the next crowd of enemies. This is what it means to properly use like the theory and the practice and understanding where some of the compromises are. Sometimes you just cannot play according to a spreadsheet or according to some simulations or calculations. You just need to do a couple of practical adjustments and then you can clear the abyss as fast as possible. So my whole point here is, is that whilst there might be an optimal way to do one thing, you understand how the elemental shards work, you need to front load with Navia's burst and so on, you see that in practice it's not always the most sensible thing. And in this case it's kind of logical because you're still generating shrapnel, it's just that you don't need to do so right from the beginning. And when you've got a cooldown of, or when all of your other abilities are on cooldown and you restart your rotation, that's when you can now already start like loading up or preloading Navia uh, with shrapnel stacks for your second rotation or doing it the second time round, as you can see here, which means we can just start attacking a lot quicker with Navia. And that just allows us to have a ton of fun. So yeah, that is what I wanted to showcase in today's video. Very often what seems to be logical, what seems to be optimal in one sense, is not always optimal in every sense. And I think this is the type of thing a lot, not a lot of people are talking about with Navia. You just basically see people saying, oh, stand here in the Bennett circle, and then once you have enough shrapnel, hit the enemy. 
but I think we can do a bit better than that. And that's why I want to do this showcase and I want to run these sorts of showcases. Some of you might say, well, what about Bennett and Xiangling? Why aren't you using Navia with them? Clearly, Farina, Bennett, Navia and Xiangling are all better than this team. And I would say, yeah, that is true. Only for the fact that you can vaporize with Farina. But other than that, that's more of a Farina showcase than really a true Navia showcase, in my opinion. But I could be wrong about that. For me, what you can clearly see in this team here is that Navia is the one in which which is like the central focus. It is all about playing with that crystallized shard reaction. And that's just what makes it so fun for me. So yes, whilst it's not going to set any speedrunning records, whilst Fury Crafters might not like this, I find it to be incredibly fun. And it's just a team that allows you to just do all sorts of wacky things. You clearly understand how the particles are generated for Navia and how the reactions can be used, as well as the fact that despite Kokomi being a support, she also has her role in helping reduce the enemy's pyro aura and all these things. So everyone in the team is contributing and it just leads to such a satisfying finale. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. Cheers!